The U.S. has carried out a major airstrike in Iraq and Syria. Reports say that at least 25 Hezbollah fighters have been killed and the political fallout is quite evident. Iraq has condemned the airstrike while the U.S. feels Iraq is not protecting American interests. So why did the U.S. target the Hezbollah group in Iraq? What is in fact this group all about? And where does this new offensive leave the region already torn by war? Department of Defense took offensive actions in defense of our personnel and interests in Iraq by launching F-15 strike eagles against five targets associated with Kitab Hezbollah, which is an Iranian-sponsored Shiite militia group. Uh, the uh, strikes were successful. Iraq and Syria, perennial epicenters of conflict in West Asia. The latest installment of violence took place on Sunday. The U.S. versus Iran, the venue, Iraq and Syria. Three targets in Iraq, two in Syria, 25 fighters neutralized. And at least 55 wounded in the airstrikes on Iraq alone. One raid targeted the headquarters of the Iran-backed militia group Kateb Hezbollah near Iraq's border with Syria. The U.S. calls it retaliation for the attacks on Americans by Iran. What we did was take a decisive response that makes clear what President Trump has said for uh, months and months and months, which is that we will not stand for the Islamic Republic of Iran to take actions that put American men and women in jeopardy. So why did the U.S. target this group? Washington says that the Kateb Hezbollah was behind Friday's rocket attack in the oil-rich city of Kirkuk. The attack killed one U.S. civilian and injured four service members. Sunday strikes are payback in this decades-long conflict. Iraq's caretaker prime minister maintains equidistance from both Iran and the U.S. The Iraq government calls the U.S. strikes a violation of Iraq's sovereignty, American military presence a burden to Iraq and a source of threat against Iraq's forces. Iraq is in turmoil. There is domestic conflict and the country also hosts a pseudo war between the US and Iran. On the domestic front, Baghdad is in the midst of serious anti-government protests. The worst since 2003. Over 450 people have died in the violent protests. Tens of thousands wounded. In the last two months alone, 11 US military bases in Iraq have been targeted. First, the US blamed Iran and its proxies for the attack. Now, it has unilaterally taken action against an Iran-backed militia group. Tehran, though, remains an influential player in Iraq. Leaked intelligence reports confirm Iran's aggressive and brazen involvement in Iraq's politics. Iran has also fought the US through proxies like the Kateb Hezbollah. The militia group shot to prominence in 2008 during the attack against American and coalition forces. The group fought for Syria's Bashar al-Assad during the Syrian civil war. Besides joining the Iraq army against the ISIS in the battle for Mosul. The US State Department claims that they are funded by Iran's Quds forces and trained by the Hezbollah in Lebanon. They film their attacks and upload them on the internet for more international traction. Under Donald Trump, the US has enforced sanctions and crippled Iran's economy. Now it's targeting Iran's influence in Iraq. Since 2014, Iran-backed forces and the US had a common enemy, the ISIS. Now with the ISIS losing its territory, the historic conflict between the US and Iran is back to the fore. But it is Iraq that is paying the price. Clearly, 2019 is ending on a frightening note for Iraq. Bureau Report, We On, World Is One. All right, so We On correspondent Jagruti Dave is live from Washington, uh, D.C. This, in fact, uh, very good morning to you, Jagruti here from India, from New Delhi. Um, let's begin by asking you, uh, does this look like, uh, and it definitely looks like, that's for sure, that Trump's administration's most forceful response to Tehran 
as of now. Is that true? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question, please? Jagruti, uh, you can hear me well? I'll just repeat the question for you once more. Uh, Jaguti, yes, I can, if you could this repeat offensive, the question. Yeah, all right. All right. So, uh, Jaguti, this offensive definitely looks like Trump administration's most forceful response to Tehran. Yes, yeah, so this uh, action is seen by many as an escalation of tensions between Washington and Tehran. Now, uh, the U.S. firmly believed that the action, the airstrikes against uh, an Iraqi base in Kirkuk on Friday, was conducted by an Iraqi-based militia that was backed by Iran. And insiders, U.S. officials who've been speaking to the news agency Reuters on condition of anonymity are saying that they are concerned about an escalation of tension in the region, that this militia organization could retaliate and that could further escalate tensions between Washington and Tehran. Also, Jagrati, the U.S. says that Iran's network of influence in Mideast is growing. That's what they're saying. So what exactly does the president, in fact, President Trump there fear? What is his greatest fear when it comes to Iran and this particular group? Yes, so um, Washington's policy uh, towards Iran has been what they call maximum pressure, and Iran's response to the U.S. has been maximum resistance. And in a State Department briefing today, senior State Department officials were talking to journalists, and they were talking about these airstrikes being a necessary deterrent to Iran and their expansionist aims in the region and their attack, what they have, what they see as an Iran-backed attack on U.S. troops. And now, in this briefing, U.S. officials also said that they have imposed. Serious sanctions on Iran. Um, they pulled out of this nuclear treaty with Iran as well. That has been one of the key Washington uh, aims and policies um, towards Iran. Um, and uh, they've also said that we can expect more sanctions against Iran in the coming months in 2020. Right. Also, uh, Jagwati, uh, the Iranian uh, back militia has pledged to now take revenge. And what they call, of course, is, and I'm quoting here, aggression of evil American ravens. So what can we expect next now? So yes, this is the, exactly the cycle of retaliation, further airstrikes um, from the militia. This is what certain U.S. military officials are concerned about, that Iraq could be the battleground between this, uh, these tensions, this tussle between Iran and Washington, and what they see as Iranian proxies on the ground in Iraq. Now, the Iraqi foreign ministry has in fact summoned, uh, issued a statement today saying that they are summoning, they're going to summon the U.S. ambassador in Baghdad to talk about the future of the global presence of the coalition in Iraq. So the Iraqi government is in fact dissatisfied with the US airstrike, saying that it uh, jeopardizes, it disrespects Iraqi sovereignty. So uh, this area, this Washington has been keen to pull troops out of foreign interventions. This is something that Donald Trump has been keen to do. But it seems that the tensions in the region are ongoing and they are potentially escalating. So uh, it, it's, it's a tricky time and we could see uh, more uh, of such airstrikes and retaliations um, in Iraq itself uh, if uh, th this is not resolved uh, soon. Right. Uh, Jagruti, also like you said that uh, tensions are escalating in the region. So what can we expect? What are the repercussions of this airstrike when it comes to the Middle East region? Well, as I say, the repercussions are um, further airstrikes, further tussles between the Iraq militia and U.S. troops. Um, U.S. troops are probably their presence would uh, uh, would stay if there was escalating tensions in the region. The U.S., despite their aim to say that they want to withdraw U.S. troops, they can't do that unilaterally. There are uh, in the region if Iran is if Iran and Iran backed militias, as the U.S. claims, are going to retaliate, then the U.S. will have to stay and stick their ground and uh, continue in. The, because they are leading the coalition there. However, if Iraq, if the Iraqi government is dissatisfied with the U.S. presence and the U.S. actions um, against uh, Iraqi bases, against uh, the militia on the ground in Iraq, then this seems that the, the U.S.-led coalition, its entire presence, its existence in the region in Iraq could be at danger here. So there's, there's push from Iran to actually expel U.S. forces from the region. How likely that is, I don't know. It's difficult to tell at this stage. It's early stages as of yet, but that could be one potential repercussion. Right, uh, Jaguti David, thank you for joining us there with all those details on this airstrikes uh, by the US in the Middle East region. Thank you so much.